Okay, people. So I'm working on this stuff again. Do you see? <laughs> this is where I'm trying to make sure everything's listed. And then I'm going to have to find another location for all this crap. That's just some of it. All right. You can see there's more in there. And then there's more elsewhere. Okay. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Making sure I'm not missing anything, right? You know, Fraser Health got a lot of balls, man. They want to sit up there and throw this stuff out of court because I didn't follow the court rules. But yet, they don't even follow their own rules, people. And that's the point. They don't even follow their own rules. So, before they'll admit that they don't follow their rules, they'll throw court rules at me because... Under the BC Liberal government, they made sure that they uh, wiped out the court system for the poor people. Because they knew that they were bringing in all kinds of white collar criminal activity on a corporate level through the union sector. Right? Uh, 24 out of 68 course houses were closed. Massive, massive cutbacks to legal aid. 85% of legal aid offices in BC closed. This all happened under the BC Liberal government over a period of years. And they were in office for 16 years. Reduction in 75% of staff. Uh, cut family law by 60%. That's why when Andre was wrongfully, illegally apprehended back in 2013, I didn't qualify for a lawyer as a grandmother because um, the BC Liberal government removed those safety nets for poor people. And the only reason that I did qualify for a lawyer is because I got loud and bold on this channel and I let them know that <laughs> I was just going to go sue them myself in the Supreme Court of Canada. So therefore, before that happened, then they gave me a lawyer. Charging user fees at publicly funded hospitals in Vancouver. That's why Uncle John was so important at age 75. Um, because he had money to pay for those user fees throughout the whole system. It wasn't in just the Vancouver area. It was out throughout the whole system. When he was living, not not living, when he was staying at, you know, this temporary care unit, right, there was going to be a 30-day, I mean, uh, they only had like a 30-day period or something like that where I, he was going to be charged. I don't know, maybe he was charged from the moment he's, he came into that temporary care ward, which actually wasn't even a temporary care ward. It was a licensed facility, right? But it was a pay-as-you-go. After 30 days, most definitely you were going to be charged $30 a day plus just to uh, use that service, even though many of those people that were using that service people were being illegally detained. They were forced to stay there. They were forced to pay those user fees. But... Uncle John's case, when they moved him to the Victoria General Hospital from that location, because he went into an emergency situation with some concocted story as this is how they found him, because Judy was medically neglecting him, even though he had been in the healthcare system for 45 days, 43, let me remind you of that, they, 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 they wrote him in under that ledger where the taxpayers paid to house him for the duration that he stayed at the Victoria General Hospital to, to avoid those user fees, right? And then they transported him out to the country, isolated him by himself, where nobody was in the house, where he got sick, where he got injured, where he lost all his memory, 
because he was being abused, people. And then they kept him just long enough to do the paperwork with the blessing of Fraser Health Authority and CIBC Bank, and then they shipped him into an old folks' home somewhere along the Sunshine Coast that his sister is involved with, one way or another, through her employment and her volunteering, because it's a non-profit old folks' home that gets subsidized by the government while the patient pays $1,700 a month to live there and be abused. Basically, right? Because he wasn't allowed to see his immediate family once they got on that ferry. And he was in that hammock, more than likely drugged up. This is modern day slavery, people. This is what this is. Because the only reason they were interested in Uncle John is because he had a pension plan and they went looking for that government superannuation life insurance policy as they were trying to figure out how to steal his inheritance that he got more than likely from his dead wife that they failed to tell him about for 13 months. And when they did finally tell him, it was under duress as he was being medicated with opiates to blur his thinking so that they could accuse him of being confused and then use the Mental Health Act with the word confused and medically kidnap him, detain him, torture him psychologically, and just destroyed his life. Fraser Health does not want to talk about that, so they're going to use the court rule to throw it out. More cuts to senior beds in residential care. Those are residential beds that were being subsidized by a public health care system because they were in the process of bringing in a privatized health care system where only those with money could afford to pay for those beds. Homelessness in B.C. has risen over 300% during the Liberal time in power. I don't know when that was dated, but it's risen more since that time, I'm sure. Severe mental health and addiction cuts left many on the streets and without care. Yeah, why aren't they protecting people like my daughter? Hmm? Why aren't they protecting all those people out there being harassed by the police since they're so interested in protecting people? Hmm? The police are abusing those people out there. The fire department, the ambulance, the police, the guy gets stabbed. He's out there for 40 fucking minutes. Nobody comes. Isn't that abuse? Isn't that public abuse? Public service abuse? Why? Because he's homeless? He doesn't have a $3,000 a month pension plan for them to run in and scoop him up and go tuck him away in some fucking care home? Is that it? Is that why they don't protect him? Does it make more money for these people to have my daughter out on the streets being exploited? Uh, subject to rape, subject to murder, hmm? subject to torture. So it keeps, it keeps all those sick bastards out of the homes crawling through the windows? Is, is, is that where it benefits the union to not protect my daughter? Because those union workers don't want to be the next victim to that pervert that's going to crawl through the fucking window? So they'd rather them go chase these little girls on the fucking street and these little boys that are being exploited by the union sector? Is that it? As they sit there and tout that they're, uh, well, we're protecting Uncle John because, uh, you're a bad person, Miss Judy Torney. Oh, fuck this shit, man. Like, I'm serious. They can throw it out. I don't give a crap. Because I'm just gonna appeal it, people. And then I'll file another one. Because they're threatening to find me a hefty fucking 20,000, 10,000, 100,000, who cares? To try and shut me up. So I won't file another one. But as this is all coming together, right? It's all coming together. There's gonna be a day when I know how to follow the court rule and submit it where the judge can't ignore it. 
where he can't ignore doing his job or her job, which is to protect the public from rogue corporations and their employees. Not panhandle to them so that they can steal more people's assets and bring in an immigrant workforce that's racist as they exploit that workforce to keep them fucking racist. Because the workforce knows that they're being discriminated against. But they're just happy to be in Canada and get away from their $2 an hour job in fucking Fiji. Anyway, that's what I'm doing. Ask yourself, who are these government workers protecting? The court system as a whole is employed by the government. The health care system, even though parts of it are being privatized, are employed by the government. Every ministry under the provincial government, and I don't know how many there are, but there's quite a few, like there's the justice, there's, um, you know, social assistance department, there's the, uh, you know, MCFD, Children and Ministry, Children and, Children and Ministry of Family Development, which is social services, there's um, the health department, there's the education department, there's the cultural department, and, you know, so on and so on, right? They're all employed one way like I said before, more than 50% of the provincial budget, so for every dollar that you pay in your taxes, more than 57% goes in towards paying these people wages to give you services. But you have to ask yourself, as a taxpayer, if you can't access the justice system when you're in need because you're not capable of forking out 80000 to $100,000 right off the top to retain a lawyer to take your issue to court under a trial setting so that you get justice, fair representation, you are not being represented by these government employees. What ends up happening is you become the prey to them because there is nothing to hold those people within that colluded group of a government accountable for the white-collar criminal activity that they import with their personal ideologies, personal self-entitlement mentalities, and personal acts of corruption that fall under many of those things under the Criminal Code of Canada as they break provincial rules, laws, and regulations. I don't know why people are blind to that fact other than things haven't happened to them yet. You know, they live in a bubble. They live in a bubble and like my neighbors my neighbors next door over there with the ones that like to call MCFD on me every fucking six months or once a year or whatever it is, right? Because they get paid to do it, right? They get paid to do it to cause me trouble so that, you know, it derails me from what I need to do, whether it's working on the nonprofit, right? Because God forbid, if poor people were to rise up and, and um, expect better services, first of all, from our public service sector union, you know, and, and, and be treated as equals within, you know, the court system, the school system, any kind of system that is within our society that's supposed to be the epitome of uh, how we uh, communicate with each other. But, you know, like those dudes over there, those, those parents over there, you know, they got three kids. The youngest one is nine. Nine, seven, and five. Right? Something like that. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. You know, I, I was telling my daughter the other night, wait till those kids grow up. They think that, they think I got problems? Wait till their kids grow up. They send their kids on a bus for eight hours, eight and a half hours a day to go to, go to some French school, right, with complete fucking strangers all day long, right? From 8 o'clock in the morning until 4 o'clock, 4.30 in the afternoon, they're gone. Being raised by complete strangers just so they can learn how to read and write French. Right? Even though their parents teach them to be racist. 
even though their parents teach them to be paranoid and to spy on everybody in the neighborhood, even though their parents teach them how to be vindictive and spiteful and to try and destroy other people's lives because they're jealous that they're sitting up in some moldy ex grow up house on the main floor, right? Because that's all that they can afford to live in. Well, the people downstairs, they're getting kicked out or they're forcing them out because they can't even control their own kids. But wait till their kids get older. One of those children are displaying signs of pedophilia already. I seen it out in the back when he was playing out there with my grandson. He tried to get my little grandson to sneak off with him and go do something, and I caught him. I said, what you doing? He got all looking funny at me. I said, yeah, you go play over there. You stay with the kids. You know, don't try and take Andre over there to go play with Andre by himself. Now, did I go running telling his parents some, 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 some you know... Mm, what is it called? Um, speculation? Oh, you better watch your kid because he's starting to show signs of something. No. Children will be children. But on the other hand, if the boy is nine years old and he's already showing signs of something, right? Well, those parents are accusing Andre of, you know, when he... And here's another thing. Ch foster children are treated different. That's something I've noticed. When Andre got home from foster care and he wanted to play with kids, right? I noticed that uh, people just, uh, well, those ones over there, especially with their three kids, you know, they, uh, they, 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 you know, looking for trouble. Looking for trouble before trouble even began. But yet they're not even looking in their own dap backyard for the trouble that's already brewing. As they send their kids off for eight to eight hours a day, gone, five days a week, right? So I said to my daughter, I said, these parents that are causing so much trouble for me because they're jealous that I have a nice yard and I have a greenhouse and I can go out and build a pond with my grandson and we can build this and we can build that. You know, my grandson is learning how to be a farmer. My grandson is learning how to be a carpenter. My grandson knows how to pick up a hammer and use it. My grandson knows is learning how to use a socket wrench and all these other things right my grandson is learning confidence so that when he becomes a man and he's out on the job site whatever job site he's on he'll be a good worker he may or may not be the boss but he'll be capable of becoming a boss if he really wants to because he developed those skills early in life versus being sit there and and told to to do this and 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 god knows what the hell is happening in that environment when they're gone for eight and a half hours a day so when his kids turn 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, oh, <laughs> wait, wait, they're not out of the water yet, people. Their water, their muddy water is coming. Their muddy water is coming. So, you know, like, I don't even know what I'm talking about here. I'm just so frustrated with this shit. So I'm, what I'm trying to do here, though, is I'm trying to, I'm trying to just double check Make sure I've got everything in order. I'm writing it down. I'm going to just work on this for the next four or five days as much as I can. I mean, obviously, it's not going li to be listed on Form 22, right? Because I have to go to the library for that. I have no money to get to the library. Um, no time, anyway. Because you don't know the shit that's been going on around here with my oldest daughter, right? in terms of the distraction that she brings because Fraser Health Authority fails to protect her, you know. And it, 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 they, they prefer to release her out on the streets to be uh, exploited, abused, molested, right? Because under their mandate, she's allowed to be free. Uncle John wasn't allowed to be free, but my daughter's allowed to be free. Uncle John had to be protected for his money, but my daughter has no money. So therefore, my daughter is not allowed to be protected for nothing. Because under their fucking rules, regulations, and acts, she's allowed to be free. But Fraser Health doesn't want to hear that. And if they're watching my videos, which they, I know they are, mm. Mm. right, what you gonna do? Shut down my videos? You're going to shut down an international non-profit and the truth? Is that what you're going to try and do? Huh? Huh? Well, you might as well get ready to lock my ass up. 
since you're so interested in protecting the public from the truth. Because that's pretty much what it boils down to. You want to protect the, the public from the truth. The truth that you do a lousy fucking job and that you only exploit immigrant workers for the benefit of the senior staff within the union sector. Like the Eleanors. The Duncan clan. Right? And those crooked politicians that pay your wages. Right? That's all. That's all it is. That's all it is. You put a big black stain on my grandchildren's future. That's what you've done. As you destroy my daughter. That's what you've done. As you've turned my stepdad into a marshmallow so you can milk him for his money. That's what you've done. Uncle John said, oh, I would go to a convalescent care home, old folks home, whatever, if I was alone. Well, you know what, people? That's what they did. They put him in a situation where he became uh, alone. The minute they removed him out of the uh, Victoria General Hospital and they shipped his ass up into Shawnigan Lake, put him up there with his sister that is hardly ever around, with her husband who is hardly ever around, with her spiteful, vindictive daughter, Cheryl, who is hardly ever around. What do you think happened to Uncle John? He sat in that little dinky fucking house all by himself day after day after day after day after day until he turned nuts. And then once they were done getting what they wanted out of him in terms of transferring that paperwork so that they could capitalize off of his money, they put him in an old folks home because he had no one left. Are you listening, Fraser Health Authority? The next time I file a lawsuit, I will definitely, most definitely involve the province of British Columbia, Canada, so you can't run away from this.